Here at HIDS 15, if you had a snapshot assay, what would that look like on the Ion Torrent PGM? We've used snapshot for nearly 15 years now in forensic applications. It's very sensitive, which is really probably the critical characteristic of the test. It will work with very small amounts of DNA and degraded DNA. And when we take the PCR that generates the amplified fragments from uh, snapshot as the preparation for the snapshot uh, primer extension reaction mm -hmm. uh, and put that straight into IMPGM, they work. Didn't quantify, we purified with um, elution columns. Mm -hmm. So we lost some very short fragments, which is, you know, acceptable and um, put them in and virtually everything lit up okay. We're able to detect it and get concordant genotypes in more than 98% of cases. So that's as a first try, that's a very, very successful experiment. You've got the benefit of uh, AmpliSec providing you with um, much more balanced uh, output. So the, the, the balance between the amplified fragments is definitely uh, much more balanced uh, using yes. AmpliSec technology. And we've got our custom panel with our own markers, and that's currently what we're validating now. So we're putting those uh, 128 ancestry markers uh, through their paces with the IMPGM technology. And uh, again, uh, very, very good. Uh, very good balance, very good concordance. So um, we know that the uh, INPGM system is accurate. It gives genotyping precision. And uh, that allows us to, uh, to be confident about the, the output. We really wanted to create a, a set of markers that um, were applicable to five global groups. Um, and this, this is work that came out of uh, a collaboration we've done with Aust Australian labs where, of course, they need to differentiate between East Asian, South Asian, European, and uh, Native Australian, which is closely related to Melanesian populations. So that's quite a challenge from the point of view of um, being sure that you, you can differentiate uh, those. And then you've got the problem of population admixture, yes. people with uh, admixed ancestry, mm -hmm. uh, different parentage. Mm -hmm. And um, with, that was also another focus of our marker choice. We wanted markers that were going to provide good quality data for admixture. Yes. And then as far as, you're also involved in the Euro 4 gen. Yeah, yeah. So uh, one of the deliverables for the exemplar project, so there are uh, three exemplar projects, and they uh, do research and, uh, and show best practice in terms of uh, forensic R&D. And one of the deliverables was to, uh, to look at EVCs, to look at externally visible characteristics and develop tests that could complement the new tests that are coming, becoming available, like pigmentation tests, and to look at ancestry markers. So um, that's what we've been doing, and um, you know, this is the fruition of that work. Yes. So on the EVC front, what do you see in the future in terms of further development? Well, there's been no shortage of um, studies that are looking at uh, associations between uh, SNPs or mar markers, genetic markers, and uh, traits. So that's feeding information into the forensic genetics community about potentially new characteristics that could be exploited. So we've been looking at male pattern baldness, which is... Um, uh, it's inherited. You know, that it's inherited, <laughs> um, yes, and um, it's, it's slightly com more complex than uh, yes. other traits because it uh, has a strong X chromosome element. So uh, that's something that we need to take into account. Defining the phenotype is always a challenge with um, externally visible characteristic uh, prediction tests. What, what is uh, how, phenotype? how well you predict the, uh, yes. the uh, phenotype. And if you predict the phenotype in a very precise way, is that something that an eyewitness would do? Maybe mm. not. Um, some people would say blue, other people would say blue, blue intermediate eye colour, light brown. So there is a, a subjective element to that which is difficult to handle and adds a little bit of noise. But the tests are proving I think useful and of course the whole idea is just to reduce the suspect pool mm. in a meaningful way for investigators. So we really hope that we can provide a, a system that will allow investigators to focus on a much smaller group of suspects if they have no other investigative leads. And I think uh, the new forensic genetics is, is really starting to offer that with ancestry, with pigment, common pigmentation variation, things like male pattern baldness which we, we hope to sort of develop a test for in the near future. Uh, facial reconstruction. So there's 24 markers that have been strongly associated with uh, facial characteristics uh, and when you combine that with gender and ancestry prediction you get really quite a, uh, an interesting uh, test in terms of its predictive yes. uh, power. So yes. uh, that's still got to be validated sure. in its early days 
but uh, that's a limited number of markers. So that fits the kind of thing we've been doing, which is adding markers we already know about onto existing tests. I see. So I don't think there's any limit on the multiplex size. And sure. There is the potential to expand this still further. Sure. And lastly, what has your experience been with the Ion Torrent PGM? Very good. Uh, I think, as we said earlier, the, the, the bottom line is sensitivity. And I presented some uh, results uh, today, which are just based on one uh, sample. But it's a sample from a 14th century uh, skeleton from Austria, uh, in a good state of preservation, but we got more than half of the markers with 100 times coverage. So um, that provided much, much better uh, identification statistics than we would get from the best STR set. So um, that all goes very well for the future. And I think, uh, so the sensitivity is a key point. Um, I think it, it, it's good from the point of view of uh, balance between the markers. There are very few markers that really fall off the table in terms of their uh, quality of data. Um, one issue will be mixture detection because, as you know, mixtures are common in forensics mm. and we will need to address the issue of how we detect and start to analyse mixtures because we're dealing with binary markers. And binary markers are different to STRs in the sense that um, they, they're, they're more difficult to actually analyse for, for mixtures. So that's something we will need to address. But looking at uh, data so far from known mixtures, we can begin to um, analyze those with statistical tools, and that's something that we're developing in year four gen as well.